This is the Average to Savage podcast with Paul Garino. Everyone and anyone, athletes, celebs, and much more. What's up, everybody? I'm back for another episode of the Average Savage podcast. Our special guest today is Ariel Chambers. Ari, how's it going? I'm great. How are you? Good. How about you? Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I know uh, you're a little bit of everything, journalist, marketer. You're a real model, not an Instagram model. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I had to throw that in there. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Before all that stuff, let's talk about a little bit of background on your schooling and stuff. I know you went to like uh, North Carolina State, uh, Oxford, and now I saw you, you just got a certification from Harvard Business School. Yeah, I did. I went to NC State and studied communication media and then to Oxford in the UK, English with a concentration in Shakespearean literature, which was interesting because we actually had to like go to the Shakespearean theater and it was it was great. The UK's education is like none other, so I loved it. And then recently I just completed a car in Harvard Business School. And so I just think that you can never be too informed, never be too educated. So that's basically my educational background. Gotcha. How did you end up at Oxford? I got bored and I applied. And what it is, you can do a dual uh, certification. And so I went I loved English. I, I, I love it to the death of me. And so it, it was something that I did more of cultural ex- enriching in, instead of like actually furthering Shakespearean studies. Cause like, what do you do with that? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's, it's necessary to study uh, in another country if you have the means to do it when you're in your early twenties. Yeah. So you said you got bored and that's why you did it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I love school. I was one of those that just love school. Yeah. And if I don't feel stimulated, I'm just like, what can I do next to like learn more and what better way than to get pushed at Oxford because it's not yeah. an easy uh, institution. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it like the, I guess the Harvard or Yale of here harder than that. Right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say it's harder then in Ivy here, they teach differently. Um, it, it's less about standardized testing, more about actually like things being comprehensive and applicable to you. So the studying over there is less stressful, I would say, because you're more into it. They make it more fun. And plus, because I did Shakespeare and literature, we were in the birthplace of, you know, mm-hmm. that. And so I got to see all the plays as well as read them. I got to, you know, go on these trips and, and see like what served as the muse for a lot of it. So... It's just a different type of educational experience over there. Yeah, it definitely sounds like an interesting experience. Yeah. And uh, so I know you're an actual model. So how did you get into that? <laughs> Funny story. When I was 18, I put on my Facebook status. That's when Facebook first started getting statuses. And I was yeah. like, I want a photographer for Christmas because I wanted my mom to get some Christmas pictures of me. And my friend was like, talk to my boyfriend, Kevin. He's a booker. And I got my first agent in North Carolina, and they placed me in New York. And so I moved up to New York and started modeling then. And modeling was a lot different back then Mm -hmm. because you couldn't just submit via Instagram because Instagram wasn't even, like, a thing. I don't think Instagram came about until, like, three years later. Mm -hmm. But then I just continued, and my career has shifted from fashion to commercial. So now I have longevity in it, so I don't have to stop because I'm past 23. (laughs) So that's my modeling background. Gotcha. Are you originally from North Carolina? Carolina? Born and raised in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm 919 to the death of me, so <laughs> never changing my area code. I always go back when I can. I love North Carolina. I would live there if I could. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And uh, I know, uh, obviously, you're super passionate about women's basketball. So I think you say it all the time that you only want to cover, like, women's basketball. So what made yeah. you want to only cover women's basketball and not, like, women's sports in general? It's funny. Um, when I was growing up, it's not funny. Well, when I was growing up, because I grew up in Raleigh, Kay Yao was such an influential figure. And we used to take field trips to the NC State women's basketball games. And I, I remember I used to be so excited to talk to the players after the games. And they were so nice to me. That carried over in high school when I, because back then I was in elementary school. It carried over in high school. I was a girls basketball manager. My best friend, Lakevia Boykin, she played basketball. She ended up going to Wake Forest for it. And now she's a coach at Davidson. Shout out, Keeps. But, yeah, so I've always been surrounded in it. And I've noticed the disparity, discrepancy, and coverage of it. And so I cheered professionally for four seasons. And one of, like, my seasons was the Liberty. And so I would notice that I'd be on the sideline instead of in my dressing room when we weren't doing our shirt tosses or our sign routine Mm -hmm. thing. I would be watching the games. And I'm like, why don't I talk about the game? Because, like, this game is a good quality game. And so... 
uh, our team had an event at the draft a couple years ago, and I walked up to LaChina, and I was like, you're my goals personified. And she was like, give me your number. I'll, like, help you out. And she has. And then Howard Megdal of High Post Hoops, he uh, gave me my writing platform, so I got credibility that way and built up from there. And it's just been a very familial space for me and I love everything about it the fans are great the media is great the players are in my heart and so I I just I love staying in that space gotcha so, so what year was it like how many years ago was this when you started three years ago gotcha and three years ago and going back to college what was your original like plan like what did you want to do like coming out of high school like what did you <laughs> <That's> so, not... <laughs> to make a long story short my Initial scholarship, I was a teaching fellow, so I was going to teach English. I went to UNC Charlotte with an English major, a minor in secondary education, but uh, cheerleading was always my thing. I mean, I cheered at UNC Charlotte, too, but NC State's just the better cheerleading program. Mm -hmm. I transferred to NC State, and then I was like, communications is where it's at, because that was right, like, when Facebook was really, really popular. I mean, I guess it's popular Mm -hmm. again now, but, like... Facebook was popular. Instagram hadn't quite started yet, but it was it was on the bridge of starting. Like it started my senior year, so I studied communication media there. But like in college, I was cheerleading. I was a cheerleader at NC State, and it's like very known because I still haven't let it yeah. go. Daytona just happened, so yeah, that was like my college pathway. Yeah. So originally, you wanted to be a teacher. Uh, I don't know if I wanted to be a teacher if that was, like, the easiest scholarship that I knew I could get. I mean, I had great grades in the SAT. Like, I took the SAT in seventh grade. So it wasn't like I, a scholarship was hard to find for me. But the one that was just, like, the funnest to apply to was the teaching fellows. But the teaching fellows restricted you to staying in North Carolina for four years. And after modeling had taken off, I knew I couldn't stay in the state. So I had to let that scholarship go and just, you know get money elsewhere and that's what happened with me and that's why I switched to communications because I was like I can you know use English and communications you can be a journalist and even though it's a completely different style APA and MLA but yeah I just transitioned there gotcha super interesting because that's (laughs) that's crazy so did you ever want to become like a professor no never (laughs) that was never that was never a thing for me I barely wanted to become a teacher I just wanted to impact people's lives and I thought that that was the easiest way but now I noticed that like journalism you can do the same thing you can affect a child's life like I have kids running up to me at tournaments saying Mm -hmm. that they you know watch my videos and it inspires them and that's like what really matters to me outside of of course spreading the players their stories but you know impacting the children being a role model for them that's important to me yeah for sure now, going back to the women's basketball, I forgot even what your answer was, why you only want to cover women's basketball. Uh, a lot of my friends play. And oh, I yeah, see yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> I see them not being covered adequately. Yeah, and so it. I think there's enough coverage for the men's side. I think there's enough mm-hmm. coverage for, like, other sports like volleyball. I mean, it could still grow, but, like, I think that... You know, women's basketball a lot of times gets thrown under the bus and gets, you know, gypped. And mm-hmm. so I want to be that one that's like women's basketball, not just yeah. women uh, going through women's basketball to have a in men. I don't want that. Like, I, I feel like it, it would almost be easier if I mm-hmm. did that. And I never want to use women's basketball as a stepping stone. That's not my goal. My goal is to stay within it and grow the game. Yeah, definitely. Like, I kind of noticed recently that like niche marketing like really works yeah like even yeah, though, definitely and, like i was doing it and i didn't even realize it and then i'm like mm-hmm. hello like to myself almost like <laughs> exactly exactly so i know you were at the WNBA draft last week so what was that like oh it was super cute i've gotten to go to the past couple years or a few years not couple mm-hmm. and seen it you know become a thing it's growing it's not open to the public so like they make it fun for the people who are there and mm-hmm. They had different activations. Every year it's a different activation. This year they had a dream board, which was really cute. They had this boss lady desk that Natalie wasn't a fan of, but I thought it was really cute. They made gifs there. Great food spread, and just the rebranding is nice. It's going to be a slow rollout, but I think it's impactful. I think it rejuvenates the league, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But the draft was super cute. I had a unique situation there. I was the WNBA's digital correspondent, mm-hmm. and so I was able to have more access to the players, and it was just little cute moments along the way. I told Lindsey Gibbs about our prayer circle in the bathroom. That was adorable. It was like me and six other draftees in the bathroom just you know praying for their future and yeah and just seeing the anxiousness build up and it, it was just a, it was a great time 
Yeah, definitely. And actually, that was one of my follow up questions. What are your thoughts on the new logos and the new jersey designs? So I love the new jersey designs. I think it's really important to have the logos on the front, the team logos on the front, because like we need the sponsors on the jerseys in order to receive money. Like the money is like what steers in. That's what a lot of people don't get about the W, who's not as profitable right now as the NBA. So it, it's, it was inevitable to have sponsors largely placed on the front of the jersey, but I think that this year's jerseys or I don't even know if this is going to be out this year, but the, the new jerseys are great aesthetically. I actually want to get one, so that's great. It represents your team on the front, and then, you know, the numbers aren't on the front anymore, and that's okay. Um, but as far as the logo, I think it's, it's really cute and chic, and, you know, it's nice to have a refreshing new brand, you know? Yeah, I like the last year's jerseys better. Do you really? I am yeah. not a fan of last year's jerseys. <laughs> I like this year's I like the logos. I don't like that there's no number on the front. I don't mind that. I really yeah. don't mind that. You can see the back. They're yeah. running on the back. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I'd rather have a logo than a number because, like, I, I want to know what team it is. You know, a lot of teams oh, yeah, are, yeah. like, confusing with that. And I'm just like, what team is this? You know, especially, yeah. like, a, a normal fan or, like, a casual fan that's not, like, a super fan of the W might not know. So yeah. I think the logos are really important. Gotcha. Also, I like the logo, but I think it should be like that reversed. Like the logo on the back? No, 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 no. I mean the new logo. I think it should be like. I think she's going to. Oh. The, I think she's going to the left. I think it would be look better if she was going to the right. Maybe it's just. Maybe it's just it's, like it's, a right-handed. It's a visual thing. thing. Like when you read uh, left to right, yeah, yeah, yeah. so your eyes should go left yeah, to right. Yeah. yeah. So. I think that. I think maybe that's probably why I'm thinking that. <laughs> so uh, yeah. let's jump into the. 2019 WNBA season and uh what are your thoughts on it and I want to go down into like predictions on like MVP rookie of the year defense player of the year finals okay oh that's intense okay well so, you don't have to answer all at once but no yeah. prayers up prayers up to Brianna yeah. who is may or may not have torn her Achilles it still hasn't been confirmed but we all know the yeah. fate of that so yeah. I mean Seattle they won't fall too far I mean they still have all the rest of their pieces and you know this might give Enriel Howard and uh, I think Jessica Shepard a chance to you know step up but nobody has the quality of game like Brianna Stewart that's just that just is what it is um Minnesota Lynx is going to be a rebuilding year I'm really excited to see what Cheryl Reeves does with that like it's like a new wave a new generation and, and especially with all that they've lost like Lindsay Whalen retiring Maya Moore not coming back Rebecca Brunson Thorn- still concussed that's going to be something I'm looking out for. I'm still anxious to see what kind of movement the New York Liberty does. They've already uh, made an interesting trade uh, or got rid of Sugar Rogers is one of the key shooters. So I wonder, like, if, you know, Asia Durr is expected to step up in that, in that spot. And Shavante Zellis uh, is now with Seattle. So that that's a major salary given away because Chavante is a vet. Mm-hmm. So they have room to make more decisions. So I'm just excited to see. And I hope that Amanda Zali B shines more this year because she is a quality player. And I think now is her time to, to have a breakout season. So I think that she's going to have uh, most improved, I call that now. Atlanta's going to be good. D.C., I love the fact that they have Kiara Leslie. Coach T knows how to make those underrated players stars. Like, look what he did with Ariel Atkins. So that's going to be a fun one to watch. Indiana, if they don't improve this year, I don't know what to say. Because it's just, it's been rebuilding for some time now. Mm -hmm. And I want to see them be back on the, you know, the top of the ranks very soon. Off the court matters. I want to see Sophie Cunningham learn from Diana Taurasi and, like, feed into that bad girl image. Because I think it's really good for the league. And, like, mm-hmm. Dallas, with the shiftiness of Liz Cambage, you know, they got a Megan Gustafson, a steal at number 17. And so seeing how they develop her will be interesting. And uh, Arike Agumawale's transition to the league will be interesting to me as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What about who's your MVP prediction? Ah! Um, <laughs> mm, mm. I'm trying to think of what team I think is going to make it fun. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back on these, like, at the end of the year, by the way. Oh, I <laughs> Okay. Um. I'll even let, since it's so early, I'll even let you get two players. Okay. I'm trying to think of the teams that I could see making it far enough for a team to be an MVP. I'm going to, I think the Sparks are going to go pretty far. I think they are. I wouldn't be surprised if she's healthy and NECA would to rise to the top again. That wouldn't shock me at all. Or Elena Deladon with the Mystics. Yeah, that's who so. I was going to say. 
So either either or, I think it's going to be like a LA Mystic situation, mm-hmm. especially if the if the Sparks get Liz, if they get her, the Sparks are going to go far. Yeah, her and Candace Parker. Yeah, no, they they want it. They want it to happen. Yeah. The people want it to. I still don't see it happening because, like, I feel like if it were to happen, it would have happened already. I honestly think that Bill's going to finesse away. Oh, and then Vegas. Vegas is going to be great this year, too. So that's going to be fun to watch because, like, look what he did with them in one year. Just imagine yeah. this year. And then the schedule's not condensed, so they won't have to worry about that airport fiasco. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Have you been to the Vegas arena? I haven't, but I love the way that they treat their players. I love that they're having renovations in Mandalay Bay right now to further um, push, you know, the players and to start them. I think the Vegas does it right. They just do yeah. it right. I think eventually Vegas is going to have, like, every sports team out there. They are. Yeah. They are. And they actually take pride in that, so yeah. I love that. Yeah, and then they have the money to fund everybody, so for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, who do you think is going to be defensive player there? <laughs> Yikes. Um, hmm. It's going to be a big this year. It's going to be a big. Can't quite think right now of who I would choose, but I think it's going to be uh, a post player. All right. I know you like this one. What about rookie of the year? <laughs> you want me to just say Asia Derrick is a lover? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Asia Derrick is a lover. Now I think she's going to really turn around the liberty. She can create her own shot, and I think that she's a hard worker that can turn around that program. I think that she'll have one of the smoothest transitions, too. Yeah, I'm standing by that. I'm standing right. by that one. And uh, any finals... Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more why. I think that she's going to have the most impact on the team that she went to. That's, okay. that's another reason why. But keep going. That's fair. Yeah, who do you think is going to be in the finals? I think it's going to be Mystic LA. So right. Mystic Sparks finals. And who, there and we who, go. And who's going to win? <laughs> if, if, if the Sparks get Liz, it's over. It's right. over. All right, I'll so, <laughs> I'll take I'm going to go with the Sparks. <laughs> All right. And uh, what do you think women's sports could do to progress even more? Between marketing, media, and actual support from the audience. I, I'd like to say that men are the reason why the women's game isn't bigger than it is, but I challenge every woman to support the women, too. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of times we don't you know, hold them accountable, hold us accountable enough to supporting our own game. Just make it out to a game and show them support by League Pass. Don't just, you know, I know a lot of teams get some free tickets, don't just use the free tickets, buy the tickets. Talk about the game on Twitter. Just see how much it's changed in one year because of our Twitter discussions. Yeah. That's People don't realize that grows the game tremendously. You know, use your own platform to promote it. Like, everybody should be pushing these players. They, these players deserve more. So that, and then I think that merch would be a huge one if Nike gets it together and actually, like, sells us things. That'd mm-hmm. be great. Yeah. <laughs> Has things to choose from. That would be lovely. And I think, especially this year's jerseys, because they're new, I think it's going to generate a new interest. And I think that between merch, media, and, you know, actual public opinion, it all needs to improve. And, you know, as media, I'll take responsibility. You know, I know you will, too. And then we're just going to keep pushing even though a lot of times we get kind of, like, abused, too. Like, it's, people don't realize it's not mm-hmm. very much money in it. And so it's, like, literally a passion project. But I challenge all media to maintain their passion in it. And I just challenge players to, like, you know, really take pride in, you know, playing in the most competitive women's basketball league in the world. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny that you said, like, the women or not supporting the women or whatever because I, uh-huh. I, I remember uh, like just asking some girls that I know and asking them did they ever watch like WNBA and they were like and they're sports fans and I, and they're like why would I watch that exactly I, I'm like all right exactly and then yeah so that's where that conversation went <laughs> so it's just I, I think that a lot of times we like to be like like I'm guilty of it too I'm, I'll be the first one to say misogyny is a problem and it is it's a huge problem but we still need to hold accountable like the women who aren't supporting the women and that's like a major major issue within the yeah. female culture like it's a major issue yeah for sure i mean i like watching college basketball better than like nba but like I, I like uh watching wnba probably better than the nba Same. <laughs> so are you ready for some fun questions oh god yeah i'm ready <laughs> right, well this is kind of a boring one but what's your dream job since like i'm super interested to hear what you got to say for this one Okay, I want to be like the Oprah of the WNBA. Jasmine Baker, like, dubbed me that, and I want to actually be that. I want to have my own talk show with all the players and sit down and 
like get to know them on camera kind of thing and Mm -hmm. just like generate public interest through there but I definitely like my dream job is basically kicking back with my homies who play basketball and sharing their story gotcha you ever seen uh hot ones no I haven't what's that where they eat like there's each uh it's like a chicken wing and they're interviewing somebody and they eat one (laughs) and each one gets hotter and hotter (laughs) you gotta check it out you gotta check it out because I think it'd be something like you could do something like that. It's not like I'll that. do that only the vegan version because I'm vegan. No, but no. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, someone was on that was vegan. They did it. They did it for oh. them. Yes. So there we Anyways, go. You gotta check that, that out. That's like pioneering my way right now. Thanks yeah. for the idea because <laughs> now I have one. Yeah. All right. What's on your playlist right now? Um, I'm still stuck in 2007, so a lot of Ja Rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem i uh i love eve and gwen stefani let me blow your mind like this is like the era that I'm, I'm never gonna pass i don't understand why i am stuck in it i listen to job one daily it's it's a real thing and like when i'm feeling saucy i listen to mariah so <laughs> right. not fun not fun at all oh and then i love old wayne like anything right. from like early 2000s wayne yeah. i'm with that is my ish for sure on a side note did you see like the fire uh festival documentary i absolutely <laughs> did and i was like john will freaking wood but <laughs> but i still love his music he gypped all those people out of tens of thousands of dollars because he thought that he could build a festival on an island that they had no sources whatever i love his music so <laughs> there it is gotcha and what's your favorite question to ask people during an interview it's funny because rapid fire, whenever I say hot or cold, yeah. nobody knows how to answer that. So I would say that one. It's shocking because like that seems to me to be like a very simple answer, but it's really not for a lot of people. They're like, I don't know. Like if you look at the one from me and Victoria Vivian's two years ago, she's like hot, cold. And I'm like, Victoria, that's not a thing. So it's just always funny. And then I like knowing what's on their playlist because I'm at the awkward age where I'm young enough to be relatable, but I'm old enough to be like completely out of that music circle yeah. so like these like ncaa players are telling me what's on their playlist and i've never heard of these rappers a day in my life i'm like good guy i'm like the auntie at the cookout that knows nothing but wants to jam to everything so that's another fun question yeah for sure i'm kind of getting there too because i was updating somebody's website the other day and they had they were putting up rappers and i had no idea like two i never even heard of two of them and i was like <laughs> like how are they famous but all right that's it it's, it's so crazy it's yeah. so crazy i'm just like i'm old at this point good god yeah all right, who are five people that you want to interview? Hmm. Like basketball. Okay, so my number one list of things to do. I really want to interview Sydney Colson, and everybody's probably like, what? But I just think she's the most hilarious human on earth, and I just, I, I need to bask in her energy so maybe I can be feel rejuvenated. So Sydney Colson, if you're listening to this, please let this happen. I want to. So is this a question of like who I want to that I've never interviewed before? Yeah. Okay. I love Cheryl Swoops, and uh, she's a great human, and I would love to interview her. I I know her, but I would love to, like, actually interview her. I haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. Mm, Who haven't I interviewed? Yeah, oh, my God. I know that there are other people that I haven't talked to. I would love to do a fun segment on camera with Stephanie Dolson, but I've already interviewed her. Um, Come on, there got to be someone in the WNBA you, you haven't interviewed. I'm trying to think. I'm really trying to think. Who haven't I talked to that I would like want to talk to? What about and what I, about like a coach? Nikki Collin, all day. I just uh-huh. think that what she does is so great, and she's just such a fun energy too. Uh, just seeing her in the arena just lights my spirit. And also Kurt Miller because his sock game is so proper and it's so <laughs> underestimated and under the radar and I want to bring attention to Kurt Miller's socks because they're the greatest things ever and maybe like a Derek Fisher just to know yeah. how the transition has been I talked to him during the ACC tournament and he was pleasant and so I would love to just you know sit down and see how his adjustment is from you know men's basketball to women's all right I like that and what three jerseys do you want that you don't own it could be any sport uh I want I want Lisa Leslie's jersey. I have everybody else's in the W that I would want. I want a Simone Biles leotard. That'd be great. Okay. (laughs) And then I want Jay Cole's high school jersey because North Carolina all day. (laughs) Okay. All right. Those are good ones. I had some some, uh, 
some people gave some good ones. Some people gave some uh, basic ones, but those are definitely not <laughs> basic. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And where can people find you on social media? I love to keep it universal. So I'm Ari Ivory, A-R-I-I-V-O-R-Y on every social network. And yeah, it's been real. Oh my God, it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. 